that never stays a day A band that's always coming my way For today's grim adventure, we find ourselves in Seattle, Washington, under a bridge. The bridge you're looking at right now is called the Aurora Bridge, and it has a bit of a, a tie to Ted Bundy here in Seattle that not many people talk about. Over the past couple of years, we've done a few different videos on Bundy, but nothing like this. In the past, while we were living in Florida, we visited the prison where he was electrocuted. We visited the sorority house, the famed sorority house from his murders, as well as a couple other locations. But this one here really has nothing to do with a murder scene. I mean, it's all part of the big story, but it's different. Like I said, we haven't done anything like this before. You see where these cars are parked? Well, September 2nd, 1974, Ted Bundy was photographed underneath this bridge standing next to his tan-colored Volkswagen Beetle. And in the photo, you can see the bridge right here. This is the Aurora Bridge. And then if you look way off in the distance, right there, you see the blue bridge? That's a drawbridge that can be seen in the photo. I think in the photo it was red, now it's painted blue. The Fremont drawbridge. But this photo, at least in my opinion, is, is pretty crucial to the story of Ted Bundy. I mean, he was living here in Seattle. He had a life here in Seattle. He started his, his killing spree here in Seattle. And then this photo was taken September 2nd, 1974. The morning that he left, he packed everything he had into his Volkswagen Beetle and he left for Utah to study law. For the first time, an Ogden woman who had a close relationship with serial killer Ted Bundy is telling her story. Mary Lynn Chinow was the best friends with Bundy's longtime girlfriend. She knew him for years and her call to the police may have helped investigators build their case against the serial killer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Mary Lynn Chino uh, knew Ted Bundy when she lived in Seattle and when women started to disappear from Washington State. She also knew him after he moved to Salt Lake City to go to the University of Utah's law school, and women there started to disappear as well. Have you ever physically harmed anyone? Ever physically harmed anyone? No. So let's talk about when you first met Ted. Okay. Marilyn Chino remembers that night at the Sandpiper Bar in Seattle as if it was yesterday. I've never forgotten this. And I walked in and across the room, I saw Ted for the first time. Blue shirts. <laughs> I will never forget the look on his face. I can't describe it. It wasn't, it wasn't evil, but it was like he was staring. Chino and her best friend Liz Klepfer had moved from Ogden, Utah to Seattle. That cool evening in 1969, Klepfer would begin a years-long relationship with Bundy. Oh, that's when he escaped from Glenwood Springs. And Chino would be pulled along for the dark, winding ride. I'm innocent. You'll be put to bed by a current of electricity. Theodore Bundy was executed at 7.16 a.m. in the electric chair at Florida State Prison. Ted was charismatic. I'm not guilty. <laughs> he was nice. Does that include the time I stole a comic book when I was five years old? In the early 70s, Marilyn, Klepfer, and Bundy were together all the time, close friends, jutting around in Bundy's Volkswagen. Your friend Liz took this picture? Mm -hmm. He was in his infamous tan uh, Volkswagen. Then it began. Here's another shot of the bridge, this time with the walking path next to it. You can see the drawbridge going up. What's that sign say? Aurora Street End. Now we are all familiar with the horrors of Ted Bundy and the nightmares that he, I wanna to say to this day, still gives people. Now, as horrific as Ted Bundy is, I always find it kind of amusing, this photograph, because he's, he's kind of nerdy in it. I mean, he's got his bicycle attached to the back of his Volkswagen Beetle. It's packed up and he's just kind of posing here on a beautiful day. Beautiful day, just like today. Now what's interesting about this since we pulled up here, this is a, a hiking path, a walking path, and 
two people have come up to me and said, isn't this spot absolutely beautiful underneath this bridge? That there's just something about it. Something that draws me here. It is a beautiful spot, I'll give it that. And if you stand here long enough, you'll see ducks and geese and boats all underneath this bridge. Speaking of the little buggers, as long as they keep their distance from me, I'm not a big fan of birds of any kind. And because technically this is a true crime video, it only makes sense to show the neighborhood block watch sign right here in the spot where Ted Bundy was. It's got some graffiti on it. We immediately report all suspicious activities to the Seattle police. There are people living down here. I mean, not under the bridge like they're homeless or anything like that. You see the signs here, there's mailboxes that say the old boathouse. But because there are people living here, there are trash cans. And what's interesting is even back then in 1974 in this photo, Ted Bundy, you can see trash cans in the photo. Every city has something really cool to look at, something that makes them very special. And Seattle has a bunch, but the Fremont Troll has got to be our favorite. It's massive. If you look at the Fremont Troll from this side, pay close attention to what he's holding in his hand, his left hand. You see it? It's a Volkswagen Beetle. Now, don't quote me on this, but the same bridge that we're under right now, if we were to go across the river on the other side, that's where the picture of Ted Bundy and his Volkswagen Beetle were taken. Almost the same exact spot, but on the other side of the bridge. Coincidence? Maybe. Or it could be something darker, right? So in theory, if we were to keep going down this road, follow the bridge, go across the water, to the other side to where I am standing, almost exactly where I am standing. This is where the Ted Bundy photo was taken. And then on this side of the river under the bridge, we have a troll holding a Volkswagen Beetle. I really don't think it's a coincidence. I really don't. Ted Bundy was a monster. There's no mistake about that. And he was a monster that fooled society. He held a job, had a girlfriend. He even went to law school. And. It's important, at least for us, to point out that we're not glorifying what happened or what he did, you know. Instead, not trying to com create compassion about him either. But we just want to point out, especially with this video, that he was a monster that was just hiding amongst us the entire time. What do they call that? The monster who lives next door kind of a situation? Right? Yeah. And it just so happened that it was pretty much on a college campus, which brings us to our next location. Jessica was standing in front of that fence for a reason. Now supposedly, the owners of this property put this fence up to try to deter true crime enthusiasts from coming and seeking out this spot. But this building right here, well hidden behind the fence and the trees, back whenever Ted Bundy was here, this was the Rogers boarding house. And Bundy actually lived here on the second floor in the back facing the alleyway. And he was actually living here when he started committing his crimes here in Seattle. If you are familiar with the crimes of Ted Bundy, then this probably sounds familiar. Boarding house on a college campus. Well, all of these buildings that we're walking by right now are all student housing here at the campus. When Bundy eventually made his way to Florida, he was staying also at a boarding house whenever he committed the Chi Omega sorority house murders. So, a little strange, right? So this is the alleyway behind the boarding house Bunny was staying at. And as we walk down it, you're gonna see this garage on the left-hand side. It's, it's strange to think that this building is still standing because a lot of the buildings around here are relatively new. But this one, it looks like it could use a paint job as well. But this is the property. 
Now, Ted Bundy's room that he was renting out is that one right there, the second floor on the corner. You can see those two windows. Now, it's interesting to point out this, that this boarding house is still standing while the one that's down in Florida is long gone. All that remains is a giant tree that stood out front. I'm gonna post a, a link to that video in the description of this one if you wanna watch that. But this is it, it's still standing. People still live here today. People still go to school here. I don't know who's staying here now while they're at school, but can you imagine finding out that you're staying in that room? The entire time Bundy was living at the boarding house committing murders that nobody knew about, he was in a pretty serious relationship with a woman by the name of Liz. Liz lived on the street that we're standing on right now. In fact, the house is just right down there. Even though he and Liz had a pretty serious relationship, they both kept their separate residences. Bundy was over there at the boarding house and Liz was here and he would often spend most of his nights over here, but still they kept everything separate. Now, from what I read, 1974, right around the time that Ted packed everything up and went to law school in Salt Lake City, they were having some pretty serious problems and Liz actually thought he was cheating on her. Uh, he started getting into some pretty deviant sexual practices. He would often choke her and it scared her. So they had a lot of issues. Now Liz's house is this one right here and I'm gonna show it to you guys in just a little bit. In fact, where she was living, where Bundy was actually staying with her, uh, is for rent now. I don't think we can get inside, but I'm gonna show it to you. Now, right around the time that all of this was going down, there was an eyewitness to one of the attacks. Somebody saw Bundy and reported it and they drew a picture of him and they released it to the public and Liz saw it and she got freaked out because she's like, oh my God, that looks just like Ted. So she tells the police, the police actually go and they talk to Ted and they were so impressed with how well he was spoken and, and they couldn't believe that he was the type of person that would do this, so they dismissed it. And then they released the car. They said this, the perpetrator is driving a Volkswagen Beetle, just like Ted. And Liz got freaked out. And then they said that it was actually a dark color Volkswagen Beetle. He drives a light color. So she was like, oh, it wasn't Ted. So she kind of dismissed it. And it wasn't until after he was caught that all of this really started coming to light. Police knew the suspect drove a Volkswagen and were able to produce this composite sketch. There was something about it that just grabbed my attention. And there was just something about the jawline or something like that that made me think, wow. And you called Seattle police? Yeah, I called anonymously. Did you ever ask Ted, are you concerned about the similarities? In the very beginning, I asked him, I said, did you read this? Do you know what they're saying? There's so many things here that people are gonna be looking at you, kind of making a joke out of it. But once I started to worry, like, could this be true? I didn't feel safe bringing it up. I didn't want him to know what I was thinking. It's definitely a beautiful house, that's for sure. I wouldn't mind living here. The address is 5208. 18th Avenue Northeast. And Liz, she was living on the first floor to the right. You can see that giant window right there. The sign in front of the house says that rooms are for rent, not the entire house. And it just so happens that the one that Liz was living in is the one that's empty. You can actually see some of the windows are open so they can air it out. It's those windows right there. Well, this is interesting. Looks like somebody carved the name Bundy into the tree right there. Crazy. It just blows my mind that somebody like Bundy can do what he did and still live a normal life, so to speak. Come here night after night and sleep with a woman he loved. And, and then in 1974, packed up his Volkswagen Beetle and then the rest is history. It blows my mind. The house you're looking at right now is Ted Bundy's childhood home. He spent most of his childhood here as well as his teenage years. And if I'm not mistaken, he moved out of here 
I'd say probably around like 1973, 1974. And that's whenever he moved to Seattle and everything started happening. Now it is widely believed that him living here is pretty much what started everything. And I'm talking everything. I'm gonna show you a couple different photos of how it looked back then. But in different interviews, Ted Bundy said that growing up and living on this street in this house, that he would often go to the different neighbors' houses in the middle of the night and peek through their windows and go through the trash cans looking for true detective magazines. One thing I find interesting is during prison interviews, Bundy said that while he was growing up in this house, he would often go out in the middle of the night to the woods behind his house, take off his clothes and just go running through the woods. With that being said, the photo you're looking at right now was taken back in 1957. This is what it looks like. And then I'm gonna fade in the GPS satellite. This is what it looks like now at 2023. You can see all the houses, including the highway there. It's Highway 16. Bundy's first confirmed kill is actually in 1974, but a lot of people believe that he actually killed a lot earlier. Even himself kind of alluded or hinted that there were other people that he wasn't caught for. He never owned up to it. Now, when he was living here, probably less than five miles away, there was a young girl that went missing. And it's believed that Ted Bundy killed her, that she was one of the very first. It's not proven, but a lot of the evidence, if you will, a lot of the same things that happened that night leading up to her disappearance it has been mirrored or throughout Bundy's career. It's like his MO, I guess you would call it, but nobody really knows for certain. He even said, it wasn't me. Decided to drive around the corner to the backside of the house. There's an alleyway back here. But this is the backyard of Ted Bundy's home. Well, where he grew up. pretty eerie just to think about. I mean, there's, there's kids' toys back there right now, which means a family lives here. But you can just imagine a young Ted Bundy playing back here. When it comes to telling the story of Ted Bundy, I know this is not your typical video that you would find online. Most people go to the different crime scenes. And again, we're not trying to glorify anything or try to create pat compassion or anything for the man and what happened it's just just trying to get into that mindset that he was a real human being that these are all real lives that he affected and he could be the person your next door neighbor or my next door neighbor you, you just never know he was that good at hiding in plain sight with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time trying to track down some of the locations for Ted Bundy here in Seattle and Tacoma, Washington. Until next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 